Arizona next week. Welcome back to the Five of Ten Show, everyone. I'm your host, Jasmine Tran. And I'm Zeke Samoy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And we just wanted to start today by giving a shout out to everyone who was on the show last week. That's right. Everyone did a super job from Jamal and Sherry opening the show as our hosts to Jesse and Brian talking about their ASLI designations and our man Taylor locking in for the last minute. It was also really fun to experience the show on the other side of the screen. And the chat was super active last week, too. That's right. I know. Great energy. So let's see if we can get it going again. Chat, let me hear you. Uh, mics are muted. That's right. Mics are muted indeed. Good point. But let's see who's logged in anyways. Let's see who's got. We got Christian with the Jimmy Butler background. Uh, just a heads up. The theme this week is under the sea, Christian. Not heat basketball players. But good try. We are close. We have some ooh, good backgrounds right now. Jennifer Batista. We have Charlotte with some cool ooh, under the sea backgrounds. Bikini bottom. Bikini bottom. We got some other people. We see Jody. We see Teresa. Hello, everyone. I don't... Oh, look at Diana's background. Dory. Dory. That's a cool background. Forgetful. <laughs> Forget it. And while we're at it, let's talk about this week's team's background contest. As you might have seen from this week's 5 at 10 email, this week's theme is Under the Sea. So come up with your most creative background with that theme, and we'll have a winner selected by the end of the show. Yes, we even have our very own judge taking a look right now at everyone's backgrounds. Right now as we speak, Kyle, can we get a live image of that? Is that possible? Hey! Whoa, shout out to our very own Adam Rosenthal for taking on his role as this week's judge. Hey, Adam, how's it going? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Excited to see all the creative backgrounds. Yeah, great. Thanks for, thanks for hopping on, Adam. We'll leave you to it. We don't want to take up too much time because I know this is a serious job. Good deal. <laughs> thanks, Adam. All right, there's Adam, the jury and executioner of ensuring we have a proper winner for today's episode. And as for today's episode, we're kicking things off with Last Minute, tackling week four of the NFL. Followed by a very important conversation with our VP of Operations and Events, Phaedra Jackson, about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And finally, we finish off with some trivia hosted by yours truly. This week's theme is just like our team's background contest, Under the Sea. So get your aquatic maritime caps ready, because you'll need to know everything from sea life to sea lean Dion. Nice one. Right you are, Zeke. So let's toss it on over to Last Minute. We'll see you guys for trivia following Ed and Eric's usual shenanigans and Phaedra's interview. Hit it, Kyle. Thank you, Zeke and Jasmine, and hello, Slayers. Welcome back to another episode of Last Minute. Yes, the, fo the show that is dedicated to NFL football. And my three SLA core value name cats. And we're talking football, man. This is a football show, brother. You know what I'm saying? No one cares about your strange obsession with your cats, man. Oh, okay, whatever you say, man. But come on, my naive New York Giants fan, with Kenny Pick Six Pickett totally bombing mm. this last Sunday. I, uh, I need something to raise my spirits. Uh, and I think you need something as well after your team's game on Monday night. Simple. We suck. Plain and simple. We suck. Do I blame our quarterback? Yes and no. I mean, Jones, he's trying. He's running the ball. He's getting the first downs. But it's not enough. At the same time, I mean, what are you supposed to do, man? I mean, the whole O-line is wide open. Mm -hmm. He's scrambling to get away. Did y'all see the Monday night game? It was horrible. <laughs> it was. 11 sacks. <laughs> the pick six. That was pretty bad. We got to do better, man. This It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, well, nothing better than talking about the failures of our teams for the whole company to see. I don't want the whole company to see, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate failing, man. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to our core value recap and actually talk about a good game, man. Ag agreed. And today's core value is motivated. Motivated. 
And for anyone who doesn't know what that core value means, it is behind what you do every day. Um, it pushes you to be more enthusiastic and determined to achieve success. That's right. And which team did you feel was most motivated last week? I'm going to give it to Denver, man. You know what I'm saying? The, the offense put up some solid points. Defense started making game-changing plays, and they rallied together to get that victory over the Bears, 31-28. to Clisten, I'm sorry, homie. Yeah, sorry, Ugh. Clisten. Uh, but nice <laughs> pick. I'd agree with that. And a quick shout-out to the Broncos as just – as an organization as a whole, yeah. we're finally getting a win. Finally. Yeah, Broncos country. <laughs> Let's ride. It's one and three. One and three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, what game are you looking forward to this upcoming week? You know which one. Ooh, I, think I think we all know. One. I yeah. think everybody's looking for this one. <laughs> yes, it's mm -hmm. going to be the Sunday night game, Cowboys yeah. versus Niners. This will be an excellent test for both teams, two fantastic defenses, and I'm curious how Purdy and McCaffrey do against the Cowboys defense. Honestly, man, I think the Niners will most likely beat Dallas. Just be, uh, just be fair. Um, I want him to beat Dallas so I can have my man Stephen A. on first take make fun of him. But I say this too, man. Niners, you got a lot of weapons. You got Debo, Ayuk, who's making excellent plays and good catches. You got Kittle. Um, start utilizing him, man, because eventually that run game is going to get shut down. It's not hate. I'm just saying McCaffrey, they coming for him. Mm -hmm. um, he's doing his thing, which is cool and all, but save him for the playoffs. Yeah, no, it, I, you know he's injury prone too, so yeah. you got to watch out. Uh, but should be a good game. But now it's time for everyone's favorite part, the winner of the SLA football pool. Ah. Eric, will you please do the honor and announce the winner? Oh, no doubt, man. Uh, so this week's winner goes oh, to Hector Salas. Hey, Hector. <laughs> <laughs> Hector, look at me. Did you change your name or something, man? You need to tell me about Hector. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what he put on. Oh, Sorry. man. <laughs> Congrats on winning a $25 Visa gift card, Hector. And you also won last week's trivia. Good wow. job. My cat knowledge able would be so proud of you. E, how do you even call a cat knowledge able? Like when you see him, knowledge able. Yeah. Come here, boy. Yeah. Come here, knowledge treats. Bag of treats. Shake it. Dude. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Let's, let's move on before it's talking about the mother two cats. <laughs> what? Right? Uh, knowledge able. God, such a hater. Yes. Anyway, as hate, a, hate, hate, hate. No. Okay. <laughs> well, as a last minute reminder, we'll be having our first ever Major League Baseball pool. Yes, um, it's, it will be a bracket much more like, um, just like March Madness. Yes, so all you need to do is fill out the bracket Eric emailed you and mm -hmm. send it back in. This is not like our football pool where it mm -hmm. happens every week. Just mm -hmm. fill out which team you think will win each series and the World Series. We'll find out who wins the whole thing at the end, at the end of the World Series. Yes, and don't forget to write down how many games it will take for the winner to win the World Series. Um, the deadline to submit your picks to me will be, give it to me by 12 o'clock today, noon today. Get it to me by then. Yes, and uh, yeah. wow, that's going to do it from us here at Last Minute. Yay. We'll see you all next week. And remember, Niners, please beat the Cowboys. Mm. Please, we're all better off when the Cowboys lose. Yes, please, because if y'all lose against the Cowboys, I never hear the end of it from the Cowboy fans out there. My brother-in-law will be calling no. me. I never hear the end of it, man. It'll be awful. Yes, and uh, now we're going to turn it over to uh, Jasmine, who had a very important conversation with our very own Phaedra Jackson. Jasmine, take it away. Thank you, Last Minute. I'm joined here today by Assistant Vice President of Operations and Events, Phaedra Jackson. Phaedra, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, I know that you prefer to be behind the scenes most of the time, so we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. So now we're here today to talk about a very important topic within our organization, mm -hmm. diversity, equity, and inclusion. So today's interview is going to be all about the topic, but more specifically about a conscious bias and maybe some resources on how we can learn more about DEI. Okay. And before we dive too deep into it, what does diversity, equity, and inclusion mean to you? Well, everyone holds um, unconscious beliefs about a social, a various social and identity groups, from educational to gender bias to age bias. Um, so DEI represents individuals' voices to be heard, to, be feel, inc to feel included, um, for people to have the conversations that are maybe are uncomfortable um, and us being okay with being uncomfortable, being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think that DEI is a great representation of that. Absolutely. So it's like about creating a safe environment where people feel like they can't amplify the words. Yes. Absolutely. And as we hear and discuss DEI, one topic that usually comes up is unconscious bias. So how do we understand conscious bias versus unconscious bias? Well, conscious bias is defined as attitude towards a group we are aware of. Unconscious bias is attitudes operating outside of our awareness or our, our control. Um, we form opinions about others without, without having relevant information. Absolutely. So have you ever been affected by bias in your career? 
Um, yes, I interviewed for this position or this company about 10 years ago through a contracting agency. And um, I went to the agency, had a, it was a, called a screening interview at that time. Um, I met with a gentleman and midway through the screening process, he stopped and he goes, you're very articulate. Um, he said, I have a coworker who should meet you. And we talked, never went through the interview questions or anything. Um, and that was because you had already formed an opinion about me before you even had the relevant information, before you even spoke to me. And so that's a, a, an example of a subconscious bias or unconscious bias. And would you say that everyone has some form of bias, whether they know it or not? Yes, definitely. Um, and we see it in our everyday life, and we've all done it. Someone's walked in on an interview, someone has applied, whether it was a phone interview, an in-person interview, we've looked at their resume, um, whether they have the educational background, for anything, we've already formed an opinion about that individual before we've even met them or t spoken with them. Right. And what are ways that we can identify our own biases? Um, Self-reflection. It is definitely, a, a, you should definitely look at yourself and understand that we all have experiences that have shaped and molded us into who we are. Um, whether those experiences are valid or not, that's a personal, that's a personal self-reflection. But we pass on those experiences to individuals and we judge individuals through our own personal experiences. And we don't give that individual a time to shine and show you something different. So the first step is just to recognize it's it. Just to recognize and it. And just to talk about it. Exactly. So how do you stay informed on topics surrounding DEI? Um, I go to a lot of DEI conferences. Um, I have, I'm part of the, I'm a liaison for the DEI committee. Um, and that is, you know, a board committee and I'm, I'm their liaison. And I also, I, most importantly, I just talk. You just talk to people, whether, um, and that's the best way to find out how people are feeling. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but without practical application, which is just talking to people, um, you won't know. You won't stay informed. Um, and I think that's the best way. It's just to just to have the conversation, the tough, hard conversations. Right. Be, un be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Exactly. Um, so how would you advocate for DEI? to people who don't think that it's important in a successful workplace? Um, walk in that individual's shoes. But the main thing I think it starts with management. Um, you, you Management when they'll trickle it down to their teams. If an individual feels like they're included or that their voice is being heard or their individuality is being seen, everyone wants to see a representation of themselves. You will, in my opinion, get a far more superior work product out of them. Um, because they feel like they're being heard. But if you don't, you get a subpar pro product out of that employee um, because they don't feel their voice. They don't hear their voice. And I think that's gonna determine the fate of any company. Everyone is not a cookie cutter. Um, we all bring a very different dynamic to the workplace and the work environment. By, by embracing that and understanding that, I think your companies can go, they can go far. Absolutely. Um, again, Management to me is key. You know, there are two examples of management and this company um, that I think exemplify that the most. Again, every department across this company does a great job, but these are two departments I work with personally. And um, one is James Green. His team um, may not have necessarily the educational background that matches their positions. However, James has looked past that and he has said, let me give you the tools for success. I, I recognize your individuality. I recognize what you can bring to my team. Um, but now let me show you the skills that may help and uh, help cultivate that individuality. And I think he's a great example of that. The other person is Barbara. Um, I think Barbara has, does an amazing job of recognizing our individuality. Um, she, again, we all come from different educational backgrounds within her department. And she said, I recognize that and I understand that, but let me give you some tools also. Let me give you tools to succeed. And currently, right now, I am taking business law at um, Cornell. Um, and it's just an example of how management can show you. You may not meet the educational background or you may not, but we can help you. Everything can be taught and learned. But that individuality is what makes us successful. That what makes the culture of the SLA as great as it is. Those are some amazing <laughs> perspectives. Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. And if anybody has any questions or would like to talk more in depth about DEI, can uh, they contact you? Of course, you can email me, teams me, call me, and I'll be happy to share any information with you, any resources that I may have. All right.
Well, thank you so much, Pedro. You're for welcome. Joining us thank today. you. Thank you for having me. Wow, what a great conversation. I'm really glad, Jasmine, you got to sit down with Phaedra and talk about all those things together. You know, everyone can learn something from that conversation. Yes, and we've all experienced bias at some point in our personal and professional lives. So it's conversations like those that we should be able to have with our peers. Absolutely well said. You know, so thank you once again, Phaedra, for having that conversation with us. Can't wait for her to come back to the studio. It sounds like she's dying to. I know she loves being in front of the camera. That's right, you said, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we also have some Slayers here today that are probably just as excited, maybe even more, to get today's trivia going. I couldn't agree more. Jamal, what could today's prize winner win? Thank you, Zeke. Today's winner is going to be spoiled rotten with our selection of prizes. Our first prize option is a burrito and cookie combo, courtesy of a $50 gift card to Crumble Cookie and a $50 gift card to Chipotle Mexican Grill. Sweet or savory? Dinner or dessert? Sprinkles or cilantro? These questions can drive you mad, but not with this prize option. The best of both worlds, crumble cookies and Chipotle Mexican Grill. But what if you prefer to share your prize with friends and family? Well, look no further than prize option number two, a $100 gift card to Gyukaku Japanese Barbecue. Gyukaku is all about spending time with friends and family. With a personal grill installed at every table, you can all take turns being chef at Gyukaku Japanese Barbecue. Yes, chef. And for those of you out there who just aren't that hungry, we have our final prize option for you. Two adult tickets to the San Francisco Zoo and Gardens and a $50 Visa gift card. Make a trip to the peninsula named after St. Francisco with some money in your pocket and a free visit to their zoo. With more than 2,000 exotic, endangered, and rescued animals and 100 acres of majestic and peaceful gardens, you're bound to have koala tea time at the San Francisco Zoo and Gardens. Now back to you guys in the studio. Wow, a lot of great prizes to choose from once again. Koala tea. Oh, that's good, a good one. one. Good one, Jamal. So no reason to keep you all waiting. Sign up for today's Kahoot game with the pin code right here. And congratulations to our first signee, Omar. Okay. Expect another prize in your SLA inbox. Congratulations. Again, pin 6659458, but... Oh, yeah, uh, my bad. No, no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> so, Jasmine, out of those prizes, which, which would you pick to win? I do love Chipotle, I love cookies. Uh -huh, absolutely. Love the zoo, but I think I would have to choose Japanese barbecue. I've never really? had it before. Oh, okay. I love cream barbecue, so okay. I wonder if it's any different. I or, mean, you had to cook. It's kind of fun. You had to do it with friends and mm -hmm. family. It's kind of, that'd be a fun little experience. Right, right. What about you? Hmm. As much as I love quality time at the zoo, I think I also, I'd probably pick the, the food experience. I love food. As a baking cooking, cook, baking cooking cohort leader with Teresa, uh, just love food. So any prize that has food, then I can enjoy with other people. Any tips on cooking cream barbecue or don't Japanese Don't overcook barbecue? it. Don't overcook it. Don't overcook it. But also don't undercook it because that could make you sick. So, you know, find a good balance. You, you, you'll know. You'll know when you taste it. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> you'll know How many people got signed up? 65. Whoa, we got a lot, a lot of people, people signed up. We got Hector, actually <laughs> capital R. We have Nils, Jennifer, Anthony, Josh M. Azam, Spencer, YM, Yusuf Mayat, wow, maybe. <laughs> Who's Kahoot? Kahoot exclamation point. Well, okay, it looks like we have 65 people. Should we start? Well, just, we wait just be reminded. Oh, no, there's still people joining. Just be reminded, Kahoot exclamation point. If you win, you won't be able to pick a prize. So just a heads up, just throwing it out there now, just so you know. Kahoot exclamation point. <laughs> All right, six eight people. Should we get going? I think so. All right. Kahoot at work. Under the sea trivia. Did you know that our marketing director, Diana, actually studied to become a mi marine biologist before she found her passion in marketing? Really? Yeah. Well, Fun fact. maybe she'll know this first question. What percentage of the ocean covers the Earth's surface? Is it 71%, 64%, 80%, or 67%? Did you know that the ocean contains 97% of Earth's water, and the other 1% is fresh water, and the other 1% to 2% is our ice glaciers? Ice glaciers? Mm -hmm. 1 to 2%. You know, people are kind of like ice glaciers. Because they're made of water? Um, no, it's more like, you know, you see someone. That's what you see above the surface, but below the surface, there's so much more you don't know. So much more. That was really deep. Mm -hmm. Really insightful. I like and, of course, the correct answer <laughs> is 71%. <laughs> Let's see who got it right. Christian Ocampo with the cool heat Miami, <laughs> Miami background. background. And our uh, 
cohort leader. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, next question, what percentage of the world's oceans have humans explored so far? Is it 2%, 5%, 20%, or 30%? Would you, would you ever go deep sea diving, exploring? Deep sea diving, I don't know, but I would do the little shark cage thing where you kind of uh, get trapped underneath You're the water. You're not afraid of sharks? No, I definitely am, but if I got bit, it'd be kind of cool. People at work could call me shark bite. I don't think anybody would call you that. I would request everyone, if I get bit by a shark, to call me shark bite. Well, I don't know how you could do that because I'd be scared because only 5% of the world's oceans have been explored by humans. That That's means there's 95, there's 95% that we haven't explored. 38 people got it right. That's crazy. Good on you. Let's see here. Christian still holding on the lead, Brittany Trevor, our cookie expert, in second place with Joanna, the highest climber, up 22 places. Great job, Joanna. And question number three. What is a group of dolphins called? Is it a pack, a colony? a pod, or a herd. Did you know that unlike other mammals, dolphins are born tail first? Really? It's crazy, right? We're mammals, right? Yes, we are mammals. And we are born? The humans are born head first. Is it head first? Or... Yes, it is yes, head first. Yes, right, yes, yes. Are we talking about this before? <laughs> we had this whole conversation. I always forget. I was very confused. The correct answer, of course, is pods. A pod of dolphins. The... Didn't you have a fun fact about dolphins? Yes, I did. Dolphins sometimes are trained by militaries to uh, look at <laughs> to find mines and stuff underwater. They're pretty, they're kind of scary. They're that, very smart. That's pretty cool. A military pod. A military, a military pod, pod of dolphins. Imagine those coming after you. Christian holding on to the lead with Spencer right on his tail. No pun intended. That was a good one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what, I, that's what I meant. Of course. <laughs> Question number four. What is the state fish of California? Is it a golden trout? Chinook salmon, American shad, or largemouth bass? Out of all of these, which would you want to eat? Eat? Probably the salmon. Salmon. How, would you, how do you like your salmon cooked? I usually bake it with some lemon, butter, garlic. What Le about you? Lemon and salmon, a great combo. Uh, pan fry it. Make sure the skin's all... The good thing about salmon skin, you'll know when it's ready. It'll come off really easily. Just a heads up. You oh. Don't, like, if you're trying to really scrape at it. I actually hate pan frying my salmon because of that. It always gets stuck. Yep, that's so I have right. to just wait. Maybe you should try cooking California state fish, the golden trout, instead. Is maybe that, not, is that, though. Is that I, legal? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you can eat it, though. Oh, okay. Not positive, though. So maybe you don't. You got that. <laughs> Spencer! Oh, taking, taking the, the lead. lead. Spencer. Let's see if you can hold on to it. We'll see. Question Spencey. five out of, five out of six. Zeke, so that's why. What is the smallest ocean? Is it the Indian Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, or the Pacific Ocean? You know, have you heard of the Sargassa Sea? No. Where is that? Well, it's inside the Atlantic Ocean. It's the only inside. it's the only sea or body of water that's surrounded not by land, but by another body of water. How do you like how do you distinguish the Sargassa seaweed? Oh, so the seaweed makes like the yeah, water. Some things of water. Oh, interesting. Of course, the correct answer is the is... Arctic Ocean. Not close at all. No. Nah. <laughs> no, no, no. Still a fun fact to learn. Let's see. A huge trout, Kobe. Congratulations, Kobe, who is one of our newest DA uh, associate, associate DAs. Yes. 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 Newest class. Congratulations, Kobe. First place, Dallas, highest climb. Let's see if you can catch up. Last question. A smack is the collective term for a large group of what sea creature? Is it squid, stingrays, sardines, or jellyfish? Fun fact about sardines, actually. Well, I guess not about sardines, but did you know that canned sardines are now the latest TikTok trend? Yes, everybody's eating it these days. And you consider that a fun fact? I think it's a fun fact. It's pop culture. It's about, it's it's about pop, time, though. It's pop culture. It's about time. Sardines are delicious. Yes. We get make fun of them for Great source of omega-3, protein. Yeah. All kinds of vitamins. Did TikTok tell you? Jellyfish, correct answer. Congratulations, uh, the 21 people got it right. Wow, people are doing pretty well. I would not, there's no way I would have done that. Did you know that it's actually called a smack because that's what it feels like when jellyfish sting you? A smack, not a sting. I didn't make it up. Okay, I, I didn't, I, I didn't no, make I, it up. I know up. you didn't make it up. <laughs> <laughs> and now for the podium. Coming in third is Ivan. With six out of six. Wow. So he plays Hector. Hector. Coming in second, and first place is... Eric, love that one. Kobe. Kobe! Congratulations to Kobe, wow, congratulations. 
of victory, Aquaman himself would be proud of. Congratulations, Kobe. Don't forget to email us at 5 at 10 at slankel.com to claim your prize. But take your time, because I know you're going to have a hard time picking just one of those amazing prizes. And now, before we close out today's episode, massive thank you once again to Phaedra for coming on the show. We appreciate your words on DEI and are extremely grateful to have you leading the charge on the SLA's many DEI initiatives. Yes, thank you, Phaedra. Your impact here at the SLA goes much further than you might think, and we at the SLA benefit greatly as an organization as a result. We hope to see you again soon, Phaedra, and the rest of you. Oh, and that's not, not so fast. We actually have to announce our final winner of the day, our team's background winner. Of course! Kyle, can we take a look at our secret judge again? Yep, there he is, Adam. How's it going, Adam? All right, doing well. Some great backgrounds over here. We've got John Tang, who's a rebel without a cause, going with the cowboy theme in the undersea. Uh, what is supposed to be under the sea? Uh, but it does seem like there's been a lot of people that are getting in the mood for Halloween. You've got mm -hmm. Michael and Hai, who are taking the slightly morbid, but probably too soon approach with the uh, underwater submarine. Um, oh, yes, yeah, perhaps so. We've got Cecilia with an incredible fish, but I'm not really sure. Is that a real fish? Or is that a, a, a human face on the picture? I'm not really sure. But the winner for today is Alice Doe with the sea, uh, the sea otters are oftentimes called the dogs of the sea. And I'm not quite sure if that's a sea otter or a dog, but either way, it's an incredible picture that's captured my attention. So Alice Doe, <laughs> congratulations. You have won two tickets to the Monterey Bay Aquarium for you and a friend. So congratulations, Alice. Wait, Adam, did you draw that? Somebody drew it, but not myself. Someone, I'm okay. a terrible artist, but <laughs> okay, somebody well, drew it, yeah. Congratulations, Adam. Or Alice, <laughs> Alice. Thank you again, Adam, for helping us pick today's winner. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Congratulations, Alice. Another prize winner. Well yeah. earned. Yes, congratulations, Alice. Fun fact about Alice, she's been a Machu Picchu. Really? I've always wanted to be. Oh, me too. And she's going to go to the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium. Oh, that's also true. I haven't been there either. <laughs> Really wish I could. Anyways, don't worry, everyone else. You'll have another chance next week to win our team's background contest. Just keep an eye on our Monday email to see what the team's background theme will be. Under C and over with the show. That should just about do it here at the 5 of 10. Remember, our volunteer cleanup is this Friday, October 13th, at the Oakland Alameda Estuary. And on Halloween, Tuesday, October 31st, we'll be having a Halloween get-together here in the office with a costume contest, pumpkin decorating contest, and a cookie baking contest. Yep, nothing better than eating cookies and a Batman mask. So dress up, decorate a pumpkin, and bring your best cookies. Talking to you, Brittany Trevor, the winner of each contest will receive a prize. But until then... Placing your work coffee break, I'm Jasmine. And I'm Zeke. Thank you. And sayonara, Slayers. <laughs> okay.